Hello, it's been a really long time since I sat down in front of the camera to film a vlog or like anything at all really. <laughs> but seeing as today is the first day of the fall semester and the first day of the new school year, I figured that I would just vlog a bit of my life and kind of show you what that looks like right now because it's a bit different than it usually is. Well, it's, it's very different than it usually is because I've actually decided to take this semester off from my PhD. So if you're new here, I am Sarah. I am like technically a fourth year, but still also kind of third year PhD student in religious studies at a university in Ontario, Canada. And I've decided to take the semester off on medical leave with the support and advice of my supervisor because I've been having chronic migraines all summer. And while I had really hoped to get that kind of figured out and I don't know, fixed by the time the fall semester rolled around, that did not happen. And I'm still getting a few migraines every week. It was every day, a little while ago, not that long ago, but now we're down to like about maybe two, three, four times a week, which is still a lot of migraines and makes it very difficult to live a normal life and to actually get work done. <laughs> So even though I was like super resistant to the idea of medical leave at first, I feel like in the end that's probably the best way to go and the best thing for me right now. So even though I'm not like technically registered as a student at the university this semester, or I won't be, I'm gonna be withdrawing that, I am still gonna try to be staying active and involved with things going on at the university and in my department and I'm gonna be trying to still do like a little bit of research, like secondary research, but not primary research necessarily, so my my dissertation project involves doing ethnography and I've had to put a hold on that while I take the semester off and that was kind of the main reason why I decided to take the semester off because doing ethnography, being out in the field, you know, being expected to engage with people eight hours a day and like, you know, doing that kind of stuff is really difficult if I don't know if I'm going to be getting another migraine soon and kind of always having to to worry about that was something that I didn't necessarily want to have to deal with. So that's that's kind of a big reason why. But I kind of wanted to vlog a little bit of, I guess like what this is looking like for me, partially just to show that the, the PhD journey, that process is not always a linear progress from start to finish without any interruptions or anything. For a lot of people, for most people I'd say, the, the PhD process can be filled with like a lot of ups and downs, a lot of false starts, a lot of, you know, failures and having to go back and fix things and, and a lot of pauses that often need to be taken for like medical reasons family reasons or mental health reasons or whatever it may be. Doing a PhD is a huge task. It's four plus years of your life that you're dedicating to this one thing and it's very intense and sometimes we just we need to take breaks and that's not often advice that I've been good at taking in the past. Like I'm not very good at, at doing that but I'm really trying to listen to my body more and be kind to myself, have some, some self-love and some self-compassion and give myself the time that I need to recover. And I think that I need to step away from things, de-stress a little bit and hopefully figure out what's going on with, with my migraines. And, and hopefully I'll be able to find some ways of better managing them so that I can go back to living a normal life soon. <laughs> So I really don't have very much on the agenda today. Um, I've been trying to keep my schedule pretty light so that I'm not overexerting myself and potentially triggering more migraines. And today I really just have a physiotherapy appointment in about half an hour that I'm gonna head out for soon. I've been doing physiotherapy along with vision therapy and sometimes massage therapy as means of preventing and hopefully reducing the migraines that I've been having. I think that they've been helping, especially the physiotherapy and vision therapy although I think because my migraines are likely tied to some neuro optical issues the vision therapy did make them quite a bit worse for a while before actually helping to start improve them but I think that I'm starting to see like the improvements now I don't know so I'm gonna head out to that and then check in with you later
sweaty just from like a 15 minute walk. I am sweating so much. It's so hot out. This is so embarrassing when I have to go out and do physiotherapy. Usually when I have these physiotherapy sessions, they're actually pretty helpful for alleviating some of the symptoms associated with these migraines, but unfortunately sometimes like today, they actually trigger migraines or contribute to that anyway. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it might be partially because of the heat. It's like 30 degrees out and just ridiculously hot today. Um, and I know for a fact that heat is like a trigger for my migraines. So it might be like a combination of the physio and the heat um, as to why I feel like I have a migraine coming on right now. But I'm just gonna like decompress, chill out, lie here on the couch for a little bit and hope things don't get worse. <laughs> I do have some work that I need to do today as well as like a bunch of emails that I need to reply to before tomorrow. So I am gonna do that after I just lie here for a bit. The elevators in my building are currently under construction for some maintenance, so I'm taking the stairs everywhere. Um, but I'm on my way now to my university for the first day orientation for new graduate students. And even though I'm not like technically registered as a grad student, this semester, I am still the graduate student rep um, because it's a position that nobody else wanted. So I took it and I'm keeping that, I guess. So I have to go and like say a few words to them and like give them a welcome, tell them a bit about the program, and yeah, just get to know them a bit. And I guess throughout the year, I'll be putting together some coffee meetups or something so we can um, bitch about being grad students together. I was under the impression that this started at like 9.30, but I just received word that it's actually starting at 9, so I'm already 10 minutes late and I'm gonna have to take an Uber instead of the bus. So it's almost three o'clock and I just got back home from the new graduate student orientation and that took a lot out of me like I am exhausted right now I did start to get like a migraine in the middle of it which sucked but I was kind of expecting it because this is like my life now is just you know constantly having to deal with these migraines whenever they come up um, so I took some medication which helped a little bit, but I find that while the medications that I take are really good at getting rid of the headache symptoms, they do not get rid of the other neurological symptoms uh, that come with my migraines. So I know, I know like a lot of people who don't get migraines think that a migraine is just like a really bad headache, but that's really like not the case at all for a lot of people. And for me, my migraines come with like a whole host of symptoms that really suck. Despite that, I'm really glad that I did go to the orientation because it was really cool to meet all of the new incoming students for both the MA in the department and the PhD program. There's two new incoming PhD students and both of their projects sound really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to getting to know them a bit more. It was largely just like a day to kind of give our introductions and stuff. And also for me and the other current PhD students who have been here for a couple years or more to tell them a bit about the program, welcome them, impart some wisdom and advice onto them. There was a lot of focus on like how intense doing a graduate program is and like the amount of dedication and work that you have to put into it. And I add to that that it's really important to focus on your health and your mental health first and foremost above doing the work, honestly. I think that now with these migraines and like in the past with mental health kind of struggles that I've had, I've had to learn the hard way that, you know, if you're not putting your health first, if you're not listening to your body and you're not being kind to yourself and having compassion for yourself, then you won't be able to succeed in, in what you're doing and for me that looked like really falling behind in my program and now even more so because I'm taking this semester off. So if you're like a graduate student or even an undergraduate student that is advice that uh, 
that I'd give to you, my kind of number one advice right now. It was really weird too for me to be talking about my experiences in the program, giving advice to new TAs and like what to do about that when I'm not going to be a student this semester and I'm not going to be TAing. And it's so weird like seeing all these students coming back to campus and everyone excited about the new year. There's that sense in the air of the start of a new semester and starting fresh, getting back into the work and back to the grind and stuff that I feel like I'm just kind of on the outside of right now. And it, I don't know, it feels weird. It's like almost a bit of a challenge to my identity in a sense and making me kind of think about that because I have been a grad student for so many years. I guess all that to say that I'm having like a little mini identity crisis here. But I think that this role that I have as the grad student rep will help me still feel like I'm part of the university culture and like the grad student culture. <laughs> Afternoon. I was gonna say morning, but it's definitely not morning anymore. The day is like mostly over at this point. <laughs> I'm just doing a bit of laundry right now before I start to get packed for going to the cottage this weekend. So I'm gonna go see my parents at the cottage. Nathan and I are gonna drive up there tonight and take the cats with us. It should be a really nice end of summer cottage weekend. I don't know where the day went though, like I feel like I've barely done anything at all today and it's just gone. We're at that time of year where the weather is like right in between summer weather and fall weather, so I'm not sure what to pack. Probably sweaters and sweatpants. I feel like that's what I'm gonna live in while I'm there. I don't know if I need to bring a bathing suit. I don't know if it's gonna be actually warm enough to swim. I'm really hoping that it will be, but I feel like that's kind of wishful thinking. at home now after spending the weekend at my family's cottage which was super nice it was nice to just like disconnect and relax and take some time away from things for a couple days I think that I really needed that and now I'm back I actually just got back from a physiotherapy appointment which went pretty well I feel pretty good I was feeling pretty gross and like just not well this morning but the physio really helped that so feeling a lot better now. I kind of wanted to just like have a bit of a chat and give a bit of a update on my progress with my PhD and kind of where I'm at now and like how I got there because even though I started doing these vlogs as a way to kind of document my, my PhD progress and, and the process involved with that, I haven't been very good at actually filming and uploading especially within the past year, there have definitely been like a lot of gaps in, you know, what I've been doing. 
So somebody had asked on my last vlog if I would just do a little update about how things have been going, basically. So I thought I'd do that. So if you have been watching my vlogs for a long time, you may know that I started filming these when I was in my first year of my PhD, and now I'm going into my fourth year, I guess, or I just finished my third year. And the first year of the PhD in my program is just coursework. So you take like two or three classes a semester and that's really all that you're focusing on. And then the second year of the PhD is comprehensive exams and studying for those. In my program, there's two different comprehensive exams, the general exam and then the field exam. And I did both of those, passed both of those, thankfully, so that was, that was good. <laughs> it was a very stressful period. And in a lot of programs, when you're done the comprehensive exams, you, ought, you become a PhD candidate after that, you enter into candidacy. But in my program, you also need to have the dissertation proposal submitted in order to advance to that, that candidacy level. And that was something that I was supposed to be working on through like the summer of my second year after comprehensive exams, and then submit in the fall and start the research portion of the dissertation then. But I took a really, really long time actually getting my proposal done. I was super behind with that and it took me way longer than it should have and way longer than I was like expected to take to do that. So I took pretty much most of my third year to be working on that proposal. And I think looking back now, I didn't vlog a lot and like I wasn't really doing a lot of content creation last year largely because I was just so burnt out. And I think that's also why the proposal took me so long. I was incredibly burnt out and just in this cycle of stress and burnout and just like not balancing things, not taking care of myself. I also think that I took on like way too many responsibilities last year in my third year. So I was doing like a teaching assistant job as well as a research assistant job. So I was doing both of those. I took on a, a brief editing job as well, which took a lot out of me because that was a lot of intense work in a very short period of time. And I was also trying to get papers published and stuff like that. So I was just doing a lot and it was completely overwhelming for me. And some of my dissertation work, the proposal really fell to the side and I didn't give that the attention that it really needed. So it took me a long ass time to like, actually finish that. I finally submitted it in like May, I think, maybe before May. But at the end of the winter semester was when I finally submitted that. And along with that, I also had to submit my research ethics board application because my dissertation research does involve working with human participants since I'm doing social science kind of work. I'm doing ethnography, a combination of virtual online ethnography and eventually in-person ethnography where I'll be hopefully traveling and actually getting to engage with the communities that I'm studying, which is reverential naturalist communities, by the way, or like religious naturalist kind of communities. So after I finally got ethics approval in like, I wanna say like mid-May, maybe like beginning of June, I can't quite remember. But after I got that, I finally started some of the ethnographic research for my dissertation. So I was doing virtual online ethnography, doing interviews with people, as well as going to various online events and social gatherings and things and just collecting data on those. And then I had planned on traveling this fall semester and going to BC, potentially San Francisco, California to immerse myself in these kinds of communities and that has been put on hold. So that's kind of where I'm at. When I first started working on my dissertation proposal, the proposed timeline that I had was very, very different than what it's actually shaping up to be. I think that at this point I'm going to take definitely at least five years for this PhD, probably closer to six, especially because I am taking this semester off, which is fine. A lot of people take longer than the four years to actually complete their PhDs and like there's no shame in needing more time, but it's just, 
not what I'd expected it to be, I guess. But I'm also just trying to remind myself that I don't have a neurotypical brain for one, and everybody's process is different. There is this straight path to obtaining that degree at the end that is laid out by the program, but a lot of people don't actually follow that. Doing a PhD is often a very non-linear process, and I think that sometimes things go slow and sometimes you just need to take time to prioritize things like health and well-being instead of pr productivity all the time. But with all that being said, I do now need to jump into some work. I have to do some edits on a paper that I've been working on for publication. It's been accepted in a journal and the editors sent me back some feedback, some things that I need to be changing for it before it gets published, and the deadline is in two days, and I have not started working on it yet, partially because reading has been like really difficult for me lately. Even just like reading a few pages can potentially trigger a migraine for me, so I've been putting off working on this, partially because of that, partially because I just constantly put off working on everything until the last minute so I need to get to work on that hopefully I'll be able to do like at least a few hours of work today without getting a migraine he always makes it difficult to get work done okay so I'm done with reading through all of the feedback that the editors gave me on this paper and I've taken notes on all the things that I want to change the main comment that I got throughout was that I am too heavy on the theory and I need to tone that down a little which is kind of a comment that I receive often on my writing. This is something that I consistently need to work on when it comes to my academic writing. And this paper in particular, the journal that it's being published in is, it's like kind of an academic journal, but it's also for non-academic audiences as well. So I think that having too much theory in there is not necessarily a good thing. I do want this paper to be something that anyone who's interested in the topic can just pick up and read and understand easily. I was actually invited to contribute to this paper because of a conference presentation that I gave two years ago now I think it was. And that presentation was actually based on a paper that I had written in like 2017 I think it was for my master's thesis in, in social anthropology. So that was quite a while ago. <laughs> and some of the things that I reference in the paper are a bit like outdated now. It's on the hashtag witches of Instagram and the way that contemporary practitioners of witchcraft use digital photos and various editing techniques to materialize magic or to make the invisible visible. So it's like a little bit outdated, but like still kind of relevant and also just something that I find super interesting. So. I am going to get back to editing and work on not being so theoretical. <laughs> So I've been working on this paper for the past few hours now. I've gotten through edits to the introduction as well as the first body section of the paper. So I think that's pretty good. I'm starting to feel really nauseous and like just unwell and I'm starting to get a headache and brain fog and words just are not coming to me very easily. So I think that it is time to take a break, give my body a break. I don't really want to push myself, even though this deadline is coming up pretty soon. I think that rather than prioritizing deadlines, I need to be really prioritizing my health. So that's what I'm going to do. Take a break, probably figure out something to make for dinner, and then maybe return to this later in the evening, but more likely just take the evening off and come to this tomorrow. Hopefully with like a well-rested brain. <laughs> Good morning. I know that I look a little bit rough this morning, but that's because I'm up about an hour and a half earlier than I normally would be because I have to attend a department meeting on Zoom as the grad rep for uh, for my program. And yeah, it's a job that like 
nobody wants partially because of these meetings because I mean who actually likes going to meetings so I'm gonna hop on the zoom call pretty soon but I thought I'd just check in here before I do I actually had a really productive day yesterday which was great and kind of unexpected I got into like a pretty good workflow that I haven't experienced in quite a long time working on the edits for that paper and I actually finished them this meeting has gone on far too long already and I'm getting pretty antsy So a good two hours later and the meeting is finally done. It was a lot to sit through. One of the main topics of these departmental meetings is always the issue of budget cuts in the university in the department and other social sciences and humanities departments. And I know that this is a problem that's not just affecting my university, but is kind of affecting universities across the board. Faculties of arts and social sciences and humanities departments are not bringing in the students that they want and they're not bringing in the kind of money and funding and there has to be a lot of budgetary cuts and a lot of restructuring of programs to accommodate that which is really unfortunate and has definitely impacted my thinking about like what I want to do after the PhD because it's just so impossible to get a tenure track position in a university in these kinds of departments. I don't remember exactly what the stats are, but it's just like the chance of actually getting that is so, 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 so low. So yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a career path that I'm actually gonna be pursuing. So I have a couple of errands that I need to run today. I have an appointment with my optometrist pretty soon so that I can pick up my new glasses, which I'm pretty excited about. They are supposed to be special glasses that will hopefully help me with these migraines that I've been having and I'm excited to get them and test them out. And then I also have to pick up some medication as well because my life is just kind of filled with medications right now. So I'm going to go make myself look a little bit more presentable than this and then head out. back from running errands. It took me a little bit longer than I expected it to because I decided to walk since it's such a beautiful, gorgeous day out. Lovely, like fall day that's not too hot, not too cold, just perfect. And I got my new glasses. So I'm very excited about these. They're very like different from what I've had before. And they're also tinted. <laughs> This is what they look like. I think it's gonna like, it's gonna take me a bit of time to get used to how these look on me and also seeing through these glasses. But yeah, the world looks quite different through these. <laughs> these glasses are only for close up. So only for like computer work and reading. They don't do distance. Everything in, in the distance is just fuzzy for me. So I will have to get another pair of glasses that do do the proper distance, but the optometrist told me that I should probably just try these ones out first and see if they're working for me and then get the distance pair if the tint and the prism that's in them helps me with my ocular issues. When I went to see the neuro-ophthalmologist about a month ago, I was diagnosed with two different neurovision disorders. The first one is a binocular vision disorder, which is what the prism in these glasses is for. Basically, that just means that my two eyes are not syncing up in terms of the information that they're sending to my brain. So everything's a little bit like off and that can cause migraines as well as a bunch of other neurological issues. And then I was also diagnosed with something called visual snow syndrome, which is what the tint is supposed to be helping with. And also the tint is supposed to just help with migraines in general. So I'm really hoping that these glasses work and, and help me deal with these migraines. And if they do, I might just have to have like these rose orange tinted kind of glasses for the rest of my life. The optometrist that I spoke to today when I picked these up did warn me that it might take me a couple days to get used to these and it might cause migraines for me while I'm like getting used to wearing them since my eyes will need some time to adjust to 
I guess like having things lined up properly for the first time in a really long time. But I have rambled and procrastinated long enough. I need to do some more work today on a grant proposal that I'm working on for some funding that's due pretty soon in like a couple days actually. It's due on like a Sunday, which is super weird. And I feel like that was probably a mistake on the part of the organization making it do on a Sunday. But anyway, the organization that it's through is looking at the intersection between religion and science, which my dissertation project really fits within. So hopefully I have like a decent chance at actually getting this funding. So I'm going to get to it. I will be wearing these glasses as I'm doing the work and I will give you a little update about how I find they're working for me. So. I've been doing some work on this grant proposal for about an hour now, and I have some thoughts on the glasses. First of all, it's a lot easier to read now than it was before. I can say that for sure. I don't feel like my eyes are really straining to read. I don't feel like they <laughs> want to go all over the place like they did before, but it feels like just so much easier to follow along the lines and stuff. So I'm super happy about that. That's very exciting. I am, however, starting to get like a little bit of a headache, nothing too, too bad, but I do feel like it's just going to take some time to adjust to these. And I'm sure it doesn't help that earlier today when I was running errands, there was a lot of fluorescent lighting around. And that's always something that uh, is, is triggering for my migraines. So I'm going to take a break now, even though I've only been doing a little bit of work so far and just give myself some time away from the screen, take a shower, do some self care, and then come back to it later tonight, probably. As for the tint and the visual snow, I still have like a lot of visual snow symptoms going on, but I think that it might take a while for the glasses to help with that. If they're going to help with that at all, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. So it's something that hopefully will get better with time. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I think that I'm going to end this vlog now. Thank you very much for watching what I'm sure was a very long and rambly vlog. I think that I am going to continue to make vlogs while I have this time off on medical leave, even though I won't actually be working on my PhD research so much. It's still like part of my PhD process. I'll also just like have more time to be vlogging and also making other videos for this channel. I want to do some more like informative content and stuff, especially for students with ADHD. I guess the good thing about taking this medical leave is that I will have more time to kind of focus on these passion projects and things that I want to do. And I'll have more time to be making videos, although I cannot promise that I'll be very fast in, in editing and uploading them because screen work and things like that is still kind of triggering for my migraines. And hopefully these glasses help, but um, I usually can't spend too long in front of the computer screen. Who knows? when these videos that I want to make will be out, but hopefully at some point. Anyway, thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.